Now, Religion in the News, a report and comment on religious trends and events being covered by the media. This week's item is from foxnews.com, September 4th, 2007, with the headline, Psychiatrists are the least religious of all physicians. The following are excerpts. Psychiatrists are the least religious of all physicians, a nationwide survey reveals, according to a study published in the September issue of the journal Psychiatric Services. Something about psychiatry, perhaps its historical ties to psychoanalysis and the anti-religious views of the early analysts, such as Sigmund Freud, seem to dissuade religious medical students from choosing to specialize in this field, said lead study author Far Curlin, an assistant professor of medicine at the University of Chicago. Participants responded to a hypothetical scenario involving a mentally disturbed patient saying whether they would refer the patient to a psychiatrist, psychologist, clergy member, religious counselor, health care chaplain, or other. Overall, more than half of other physicians would refer a patient to a psychiatrist, psychologist. Dave, I have to take issue with this article because, uh, number one, Psychiatry and psychology, particularly psychotherapy, it's very religious. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you have to buy into all kinds of ideas that, uh, well, certainly many uh, of Freudian ideas are based on his own delusion, mm-hmm. his mm-hmm. own perversion, and so on. Uh, but there, but Freud was. He called himself a, a godless Jew, uh, mm-hmm. and he was out to destroy Christianity. So I could see some people who have a religious bent, not to uh, want to get involved with that. But still, uh, it's all about self, and uh, self is God. In, in, I mean, that's the bottom line here. So it's very religious. Well, Tom, it uh, has nothing to offer. We've dealt with this from every angle, I guess. Um, but w- w- it began with a medical model. That was Freud's medical model. And we just kind of talked about that. Mm-hmm. There's no medical connection, really. Uh, why, why am I depressed? Well, there could be a connection between the mind and the, and the body. But uh, there's no magic. Uh, we're going to somehow... Uh, straighten you out, you know, like we're going to fine-tune an engine. We're going to work on your brain. We're going to give you some drugs, probably. And I'm thinking of Peter Bregan, uh, one of the world's leading experts on psychotropic drugs, medicines. He said no one has ever verified a chemical imbalance in a brain. The only chemical imbalances we know of are caused by the drugs they give you supposedly to cure them. So they're going to work on the brain. It's not the brain. Uh, This is why uh, Thomas Zaz, one of of the leading research psychiatrists, Jewish, by the way, as Freud was, so he has the right to talk about Freud the Jew. And it was he who said Freud's major motive in, in, in life was destruction, revenge against Christianity. But Thomas Sass wrote a book titled The Myth of Mental Illness because a mind can't be sick. Brain can be. But they don't believe in the mind, although there are increasing numbers of neuroscientists. Uh, For example, Sir John Eccles, Nobel Prize winner for his research on the brain, described the brain as, and I think we've probably used this quote before, as a machine that a ghost can operate. So that's what happens in the altered state. Your connection is loosened and a ghost, a demon, can get in there. Wilder Penfield, a professor of medicine, University of Toronto for many years, he said, the brain is like a computer programmed by something independent of itself, outside of itself, that we call the mind. So now, what would independent of mean in physical terms. It doesn't mean anything. So they begin to realize there's a non-physical part of man. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this should cause concern to people because when the brain is rotting in the grave, that non-physical part of you is still 
functioning and must give an account to God. Dave, going back to this article, um, medical students, professionals, physicians, and so on, it says the uh, I responded to a hypothetical scenario involving a mentally dis- disturbed patient saying whether they would refer the patient to a psychiatrist, psychologist, clergy member, religious counselor, health care chaplain, or other. And overall, more than half of other physicians would refer a patient to a psychiatrist, psychologist. Now, that's been our great concern all along. Not only do we have pastors uh, in this country, evangelical pastors as being mm-hmm. right up to the top of the list in terms of referring their sheep and the shepherds mm-hmm. referring their sheep mm-hmm. out to professionals. Mm-hmm. And now even if you turn somebody over to a physician to get them checked out physically to see if it's an organic problem, then if it's not, they refer them to psychotherapists. Tom, that's what you would expect because they uh, are trained in this way. This is the only answer they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Tom, as this this ar- article didn't quite go into all the depths, the I'm sorry, didn't go into all the statistics. Right. The profession that has the most divorces, the most suicides, the most people under the care of psychiatrists, and so forth are the psychiatrists themselves. Uh, they don't have the answer, and yet, what else? This is the most. For more information about the Berean call, call us toll free at our order number or visit our website.